stop this losing slide that they're on right now. Stanton went deep, LeMahieu went deep. Jake Bowers will lead things off for the Yankees who begin the night 39 and 29. As the day began, they were eight games behind Tampa Bay, four games behind the Orioles. Stanton, Donaldson, Rizzo, LeMahieu, Kiner, Falefa, who's hitting the ball hard. McKinney has got off to a really good start. Jose Trevino's behind the plate. Anthony Volpe is at short. That's the starting lineup for Aaron Boone's team. Their offensive ranks among the best when it comes to hitting the ball over the wall. They don't strike out a ton. They don't run a ton. And Verlander, the fastball last night, Max Scherzer hung a bunch of sliders. Verlander still needs to strike guys out in the upper part of the zone. Yeah, and a quick indication of all of this is the foul balls. We'll see a lot of foul balls hit back. If we see that, then we know about the ride. It's starting to work. He'll get swing and misses up in the zone. But early indications will let you know exactly if there's life on that heater. Now the guys behind Verlander tonight, Eduardo Escobar is at third base, Lindor is at shortstop, Jeff McNeil's at second, Mark Vientos at first, Tommy Pham in left field, Brandon Nimmo, who had one go off his glove, a play he acknowledged he should have made last night, turned out to be a big one starting, Marte's in right, and Francisco Alvarez behind the plate. As we get set for the Subway Series, take two, Jake Bowers in, Verlander ready, and here we go. And that first pitch is a fastball that's in there for a strike. Bill Miller is calling balls and strikes tonight. Sales high at 94. You say give him a little more time. After a 37 minute rain delay, he went out, got loose. What is the right amount of time before you as a pitcher? Know that you are now back where you want to be. Here's the one-one. This is away. You know, I, I think he, you know, he was playing catch-up really since spring training when he had the Terry's major injury. And now, as far as getting off to a good start, he's always been a guy that's evolved over his career of not airing it out early in the games, kind of saving a little bit in the hip pocket. There's a good breaking pitch in there, a slider. He might need to go a little harder early in these games to, to sort of get in it, get established on that four seam fastball and send a message that he's back. There's the foul ball. That was off slider, but it still shows that late action. Jokingly before the game, I said over under six and a half on foul balls around this area. That's one, and we're just. Six pitches in. Tommy John surgery for Verlander a couple years ago. He missed 21. Then, of course, the incredible Cy Young season, 18 and 4 last year. And this is another one fouled off at 95. He's eight years older than Gary Cole. And huge expectations on the guy that had a 5 1 lead last night, Scherzer, and Verlander from the Mets, their fans. Front office and the owner. 2 2. Three consecutive foul balls. The thing about Verlander is, is that he feels that he can pitch for several more years. He wants to get to 4,000 strikeouts. He's already in Cooperstown the minute he, you know, five years after he retires. There's no doubt about that. This guy's not satisfied. So this little, he'll look at this as a blip on the screen, these first eight or nine starts of, of 2023. You know, you're John Carlos Stan, even though Bowers is a left-handed hitter, you have to love the fact that you're on deck and you're seeing all these pitches already. Fastball slider and then right there the curveball. This one is put in play. Pham going back into the corner he goes and Verlander gives it a look and Pham makes the play up against the wall in foul territory. Good battle for Bowers, but it results in an out. Not a lot of foul territory there. You get the wall. So he's got to focus on the wall. He took a peek at it early. Got it right there at the chest and knowing he had to brace himself. And now the City Field destroyer, Giancarlo Stanton, 24 home runs at this ballpark. And Verlander jumps ahead with a fastball at 94. And we'll see Justin Verlander with a big breath of relief there and a long first at bat. Paints the first pitch to John Carlos Stanton. 
thirty eight career home runs against the Mets most against any opponent. There are the numbers backed up by Harper and Freddie Freeman. Last night's was more of a high fly homer instead of one of those missiles that we've seen him hit. And this one right off the screen. See, this is where Justin, as a hitter, you're already prepared. If you foul a ball off like this, two, top part of the zone usually elevates a little bit more now to try to get that chase out of the zone. It's called climbing the ladder. Yeah, we tend to think about command as being east and west, inside corner, outside corner. Command over that top line that Eduardo's mentioning is a big deal for Justin Verlander, being right on that line and just above it. How about the 21 year old Francisco Alvarez letting Justin Verlander know throw this one in the dirt. This is where I want it. I'll block it. A lot of energy behind the plate there. See those legs moving. 15th pitch for Verlander. Missed down. That's a good take from Stanton. The count goes full three and two. There's got to be a message to the pitcher when the balls are getting fouled off. What is that message? Well, you want to see more swings and misses from Verlander, that's for sure. We see his strikeout rate is down, and Stanton spitting on that pitch is a good sign for the Yankees. Yes, he went, says the first base umpire, Roberto Ortiz. Stanton strikes out. Oh, yeah. Doubled up off the slider down, got Stanton on the second one. Here comes Josh Donaldson, the third baseman, came on as a pinch hitter, delivered the go-ahead run with a sack fly. It held up 7-6. Your final last night. The bottom of the zone called strike one. Defense, McNeil shaded up as far to second base as he can in this non-shift world. Didn't miss by much. It's one and one. Donaldson, five homers, 37 RBIs. Five homers have come in 14 games. Lollipop curveball at 79 miles an hour. No high heat here. He's got he can pitch backwards, yeah. Mm -hmm. the sliders looked very sharp. Yep. Took another shot there with it. But yeah, the, the, the idea of pitching backwards is throwing breaking balls early in the count and then finishing with that high fastball. The breaking pitch, another one in the dirt. Three balls, two strikes. Now, this is interesting. So far, three sliders, two curveballs. Excuse me, that last one was a slider right there. So four sliders, one curveball, nothing straight. If you're going to, this is the time you elevate. There have been seven foul balls this inning. See on a fairly comfortable night, Verlander in this first inning is working up a sweat 23rd pitch. Got him back, goes flying. Donaldson strikes out. Verlander's second strikeout of the inning. It came on a four seam fastball that was 95.5 miles an hour. He worked hard, but Mets didn't get any trouble from the Yankees. Here's Gary Cole now. He will take the mound for the Yankees with a 284 ERA. His walk rate right on Major League average. He does have a higher strikeout rate than the average 85 and two thirds innings. He had not given up a homer through his first seven, Cody, and then all of a sudden the long ball started haunting him a little bit. Yeah, he kind of came back down to earth. I guess a, a regression to the mean, as they say. I mean, he didn't give up a homer his first seven starts and after a career high last year, so. 
he's the type of pitcher that challenges a lot of hitters with fastballs. He gets a lot of the plate, and he's going to be prone to giving up some homers here and there. The question is, is whether they're solo shots or not. Leadoff homer for Nimmo last night. Marte, McNeil, Lindor in the cleanup spot. Alvarez, Beatty, Pham, Escobar, Vientos will set the defense after the first pitch from Cole to Nimmo. Does not swing at the first one, 95, bottom of the zone. Donaldson's at third, Volpe at short, DJ LeMayhew moves to second tonight, Rizzo's at first. McKinney, Kiner, Falefa in center, Bowers left to right, Jose Trevino behind the plate. Cole pumps in another one at 95. Verlander worked hard, 23 pitches, 15 for strikes, and the seven fouls, fifth most against Verlander in an inning this year, and the most in a first inning. Nimmo misses one down the middle and fouls it back. Two eighty six six and twenty seven RBIs three stolen bases for the leadoff hitter. Home run last night for Brandon was his eighth career leadoff homer. Cole finds himself in a full count situation. Well, both leadoff hitters have done exactly what they're supposed to do. Long at bats. Take their pitchers deep into counts, and so far Brandon Nimmo has been able to replicate exactly what Jake Bowers was doing in that first at bat of the game. The one that's going to be a souvenir, a Subway Series souvenir. Cole is seven and one on the year, a 284 ERA. This is his 15th start of the season. Two runs or fewer. In 11 of those 14 games that he started. And the Yankees are very, very successful when he starts. They were 11 and 3 in those 14 games. To Eduardo's point, Yankees bullpen's a little thin tonight after being expended pretty hard last night and in recent uh, games as well. And of course, the Mets are a pitcher short because of the suspension. And Drew Smith caught with. Sticky substance, and as a result, a 10 game suspension. Nimmo is gone. 98. A couple of ticks up on the velocity for Cole. So that's in there. Life and command. No two four seamers are the same. You can see there a great shot of how efficient that four seam spin, that back spin was on that pitch. Not only the spin and the velocity, but the location right at the top of the line, getting Nimmo underneath that pitch. Starting Marte next up. And another one at 96. So as a hitter, Eddie, you start to see 95, 95, 96, and then 98 shows up. Yeah, that's when you know you're in trouble, especially up in the zone. Ball looks big, yet the velocity and the depth is better than expected. That's Bill Miller behind the plate. You mentioned it earlier. Mark Simon from Sports Info Solution says he has a big zone amongst the biggest in the league. Plus, you have two really good framers behind the plate tonight. 0 oh, 2, Marte jammed on that one. LeMayhew. An easy one. And Cole, after that 98, seemed to fall deeply in love with the four seam fastball. Statcast powered by Google Cloud. As far as effective pitches go, pitches by Statcast run value, his four seamer is right there along with Morton's curveball. Beno Sinker and Joe Ryan's four-seamer. Fromber's sinker is also on the list. And he is just right now painting. Yeah, Cole's a throwback in an era where pitchers are throwing harder than ever before in terms of velocity. They're, they're also throwing less fastballs than ever before collectively. Yeah. It's kind of a hard to figure out, but not Cole. He's he could have pitched 20, 30 years ago. Just rearing back and throwing 97, and McNeil is quickly in an 0-2 hole. He has thrown nine straight strikes. 
Trying to go one, two, three here in the first. And he does. An 89 mile an hour slider and a good half inning from Garrett Cole. And a really good razor blade slider there to finish it off. So after the tough first at bat, finishes strong. Verlander started it and ended up getting a couple of punchies and then it was Garrett Cole. Rock solid, he picks up two strikeouts in the first. We're underway, Subway Series, super pitchers on the mound. Falefa, who's hit the ball a lot harder this year, will bat third. Verlander back on the bump after his 23 pitches in the first. Rizzo watched that one go into the glove at 93 miles an hour. Four first pitch strikes to the first four he has faced. Rizzo snapped the 0 for 24 skid. Hit last night. See the two for 34 since his neck injury. And a lot of folks make the correlation with no judge. He's also struggled, and they've looked at him and LeMahieu to be the guys that help carry this team without Aaron Judge. And yesterday they did. Base hit to left field by Anthony Rizzo, snapping an 0 for 24, longest of his career, and then a home run by LeMahieu. Swing Verlander behind 3 1 to Rizzo. He's got 11 homers, 32 RBIs. Verlander didn't like that baseball, so he'll ask for another one. Well, it's clear early on that Verlander's pitching off of his breaking ball tonight. 2 1 slider right there. <laughs> 3 1 slider. Rizzo frustrated with the strike call, though it appeared to be inside the K zone, and then he calls. Time. He was 94 95 in the first inning. This inning so far with the two fastballs, he threw one at 93, another one at 92. Rizzo pops this one up to center. Nimmo calls off Marte, and he's there to make the play. Well, Steve Cohen's money has certainly been a subject of conversation around the Mets. Much of it invested in their pitchers. Scherzer, 43. Verlander, the same this year as far as millions. senga has been very good. They're waiting to get production, really, from Carrasco. And Jose Quintana, he did have a rehab assignment. Started yesterday in low A. Mark Walter and company are encouraged by that and hoping to get him back. But a starter's ERA of over five in what was supposed to be a strength for this team. Yeah, that's got to change for them to get back in it and put together a sustained streak. Mayhew with seven homers this season, and that one is right in there at 94 miles an hour. It's interesting, just given the age, that's certainly going to become a topic of conversation with the pitch clock. And your ability to withstand long innings, especially as you get into the heat of the summer. And Mayhew bangs that one on the ground, and Escobar takes the charity hop and throws across. But in watching Rizzo call time out there, you almost wonder, like, did he do the pitcher a favor? That's a great point. You know, I think hitters are kind of in their own mindset per at bat, and they get one at bat, and they're kind of worried about their own sort of approach, but. I, you know, I think there's there's still adjustments going on, obviously, especially with pitchers and veterans. And you can see this is one way to do it: change baseballs, give yourself a little extra time. There should be no mound visits left on the scoreboard. I think you're allowed. They're up on the scoreboard. They're, they're five per game. There should be zero at the end of the games. That's a great way for a pitcher to sort of take a break here and there. Ball strike one, 93 miles an hour, top of the zone to IKF. Isaiah Kiner Falefa, who's playing center field tonight. Three homers, 15 RBIs. Three homers in his last 13 games. No, balls up. No, he just didn't bend low enough. You see all his games. It looks like he's, he's either swinging harder, he's certainly hitting more sweet spots and barrels than he has. He definitely is letting it go a little more this year, trying to drive the baseball. There's a 
better one. You can see it through the eyes of the umpire, Bill Miller. Kiner Falefa talked about last year playing shortstop. He thought it was more important to make contact. Mm. Be a good contact hitter. This year, trying to drive it, trying to hit for a little more power. One, two, and he chased. And Furlander, good inning. He gets Rizzo, LeMahieu on a grounder, and Kiner Falefa to strike out. He's got three strikeouts through two, and he has faced six. Reynolds had a hit in the first inning. Something cooking in a variety of cities where there hasn't been a lot on the stove. And Pittsburgh is certainly one of them. Arlington with the way the Rangers are playing. Arizona, the Diamondbacks have been outstanding. Updates from KC all night long. As Cole now faces Lindor. The Giants kind of creeping and hanging too, You're right? You're absolutely right about that. How good has Corbin Carroll been for Arizona? He's been great. Matos comes up from Gabe Kapler's Giants and produces some very, very exciting young players in the game today. And Lindor sends that to the seats. You know what's exciting as well is that man right there got a haircut. It's called the Edgar. Check that out. Tight on the sides, high. He's got the two lines. Keep it tight up top. Something has to give. And right now, Francisco Lindor is hoping the hair is what was holding him down. Is Edgar somebody that we should know? No, it's just the Edgar. It's called the Edgar, the, uh, the haircut. High, tight, classic. Fade. Hit hard. Rizzo, smooth. It's a foot race. Lindor, who won it? Cole, according to first base umpire, Roberto Ortiz. And he had to get on that giddy up because Lindor sensed, I got a hit here. Got him. Good feed by Anthony Rizzo to get it to Cole that soon so he could find the back quicker. It's oh, always the toughest part for a pitcher is when you're multitasking over there and you can't get the throw quick enough. Cole had to hustle down now to get back on that mound. And as a result, he swapped out a baseball by himself a couple of extra seconds as he blows one by Francisco Alvarez. Mark Canna played first base last night, and he did a really good job of getting the ball and getting rid of it to the pitcher covering. Rizzo is so comfortable and nonchalant in the way he makes those plays. He almost lulls you to sleep. O2 to Alvarez has got 12 homers already, 25 runs batted in. Chase there, and Cole picks up. His third strikeout. You know this phrase, buenos dias, buenas tardes, y buenas noches, and that was on an elevated fastball. Francisco Alvarez getting painted all over the quadrant away, and this time up. Hard to let that one go by, too. By your moan. Oh, you went there. <laughs> Donde llueve todos los días. Little t uh, city in uh, Puerto Rico. I hear what he said. I like that. Yadier Molina owns the basketball team in Bayamon. Yeah, it feels like Cole is so comfortable right now that he mentally thinks nobody's getting this fastball. Just pouring that four seamer in there with tremendous carry. Down. This is down to Beatty. Mike Verlander, an effective start to this game, and he has been dynamite and getting ahead. Chasing strike one, he is six of six, six on first pitch strikes. Looking for strikeout four. Two, two. Hits yesterday for Beatty. Spoils that one. A lot of folks out there want the Mets to just play the young guys, play Beatty, get Vientos in the lineup. When Mauricio down in the minors is ready, bring him up. But there is a big adjustment period that these guys got to make because you're facing.
five good pitchers. Every night you're getting a good pitcher who can just dot with great velocity. And that's a big adjustment. That's a great point. Buck Showalter told us that before the game as well, is that he thinks that the pitching is tougher in double A. The harder throwers, the prospects are there. And in triple A, there's sort of guys that are hanging on or kind of recycled a little bit. So night in and night out, there's a big difference between major league pitching and triple A pitching, maybe as big as ever. Yeah, especially you get to the three, four, five starters in the majors. It's like, really? Beatty, left field. McKinney didn't have to move much. And Cole has gone six up and six down. All right, the Cy Young guys are pit. Alden Gonzalez, I believe, on that telecast as well. You can watch baseball live or on demand on your favorite supported devices. Save 50% for Father's Day through June 18. Blackout, other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. This one driven to right center. Nimmo going over, and that one will bounce over the wall. Billy McKinney will have himself a leadoff double to start the inning. Billy didn't waste any time at all. First pitch he sees from Justin Verlander is a fastball right down the middle. Barrels it into the gap. First base hit given up by Justin Verlander in this game. First base runner to reach second versus Justin. And the first Yankee to swing at a first pitch against Verlander, so maybe a conversation. And boy, Billy, don't be afraid. He has now hit safely in each of his seven games. Jose Trevino next. And this one on the ground. McKinney retreats quickly in Lindor. On one pitch, Trevino is out. He's got to he's got to move that runner over one way or another. And you can say all about new school baseball or old school baseball. You're in the bottom of the order. You try to create momentum. Get that first double. If you're going to have a swing like that, it's mostly done towards the right side. Good job by going with the slider. Shortstop Anthony Volpe. Yes, he did. He did go on that swing, so it's 0-1. On the headlines in New York, no Volpe and his consultation with his minor league teammate Austin Wells about just tweaking something. They were having dinner, looking back at some video from the minor leagues. I heard the chicken parm was good. I heard it was great. <laughs> Sweet sauce. That's inside. So not only did he close the stance, he also got closer to the plate. And it's really interesting because the pitches that he struggled on this year have been pitches in, up and down, but he's been very successful on pitches away. Hope he has nine home runs, 27 RBIs. It's been the average, and here's that stance on Sunday, and you see the difference that bat laying on the shoulder to start, and a lot closer to the plate. And this one is sent to right center. Nimmo going over, now going back, makes the play. Was not in good position to throw the ball in. The result, McKinney makes it easy jaunt to third. That's what I talked about with a runner at second base, no outs. If you get that runner over, you force the infield in, most likely early on, especially against Garrett Cole on the opposing side of it. So you'll force Showalter to bring that infield in. And that would have been a sack fly. Instead, now runner at third with two. And back to Bowers, who was a pain for Verlander the first time through. Tries to get the inside pitch and does it. Nine pitch at bat for Bowers to lead the game off. Justin Verlander has already thrown 43 pitches. That's the call there. Seventh round pick of the Padres back in 2013. about Jake Bowers they really like his swing they think there's a place for him even when Aaron Judge comes back he factored into the decision to release Aaron Hicks 
as well. 1-2. That's a little high. Isn't it amazing, though? You're drafted in 13 by the Padres. You're kind of in and out, up and down, and all of a sudden, here you are given an opportunity with the Yankees, and you, you just take advantage of it. Billy McKinney feels like doing the same thing. Heard a grunt from Verlander, and it was a little harder at 96 miles an hour. We mentioned it last weekend in L.A. about the Yankees getting so much mileage out of their minor league free agent signings. Willie Calhoun also in that category as well. And a big go ahead hit last night early in this one and he lays off that. Verlander was looking for a call. Hours Calhoun McKinney, no judge and no timetable at all. And Aaron Boone says he has zero intel or information on that. And this one is towards the seats, given that the look is Escobar, but it gets over the fence and did the wall. Did it surprise you at all right there? He went with a breaking pitch, another curveball, 3 2. I mean, he hasn't gone with the fastball in, in counts like this so far. He hasn't trusted the fastball. We already saw what McKinney did against the fastball on the first pitch. Yeah, Volpe hit a fastball too in this inning so Verlander's always had a high low game and it's hard to play the low game without the high game. Yep. And the high game is the fastball up and the low game is the curveball slider down. Another good at bat from Bauer seven fouls in his two at bats. There's the eighth foul ball. This will be the 18th pitch. At Bowers, we'll see this evening. Continuing to just foul off pitches. Four foul balls in his first at bat, four in this one. Crushing the budget. Eh, denting the budget. <laughs> On the way to crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the night, we, we may have a crush fest. Well, my broadcast partner with Yes calls that pitch slot on the left the CBS uh, sort of pharmacy <laughs> the <rec> ticket. <laughs> you want a receipt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a receipt when you, you get out of the pharmacy. <laughs> Sky high, this one in fair territory. Marte may not see it, and that's okay because we. Neal was out there to get it. Marte did not see where that ball went. Felt a little bit like Texas and Stanford at the College World Series Super Regional. Seven payrolls in baseball with the Mets way out in front. And currently, if you look at the right-hand column playoff position, they'd be out. The Yankees are a wild card. There's nobody that's in first place. The Dodgers are a wild card because Arizona's playing so well. How about the way the Angels are playing? You know, they're out, but they're also seven games over 500 and, no, and coming inside. quickly. An interesting year so far with the high payroll and then those teams that are middle to bottom and the success that they're having. That's outside. The Cardinals gave up like five runs in the ninth, tenth inning today and lost again. Right back up the middle and a high hop that is fielded by LeMayhew. How versatile is DJ LeMayhew? You put him anywhere on the infield, he makes the play. Fam retired. Here comes Eduardo Escobar with Mark Vientos on deck. Seven up, seven down so far for Garrett Cole. Garrett's been doing it with that fastball. Completely different than Justin, and it has worked for him. Escobar's been good when he's played. And that one's a little bit too high. Last 21 games hitting 363 homers. A whole handful of doubles. Eight RBI. Ball one strike. Get another look at. Trevino framing that pitch, bringing it down into the zone. Big swing and a miss, 96. So 
a writer named Joe Sheehan that has a newsletter. We used to work for Baseball Prospectus, and he had a great line the other day. He said, if you don't think there's flopping in baseball, catcher framing is flopping. And think <laughs> about it. Talk about the NBA and flopping, yeah, and sure. soccer, soccer flopping. Baseball doesn't have flopping. Well, yeah, watch Trevino's mitt. That was by him, and it just feels like if you're cold, Coney, no one has made any contact with my fastball. I'm throwing it until somebody does. Confidence, conviction. You know what? I'm going to get a swing and miss right down the middle with the belt. The carry on it is different, though, right? Even the spin and the way it just jumps. No two four-seamers are, are alike. Velocity can be misleading at times. That's why we keep track of everything else. All right, Vientos, a veteran pitcher like Cole, who's seemingly right now pitching as well as he has all night, sees a kid come up. It's just saying here. Yep. See it, hit it. This is a tough start right here for Vientos. And in order for him to be able to hit Cole, he has to force him to come down. Wasn't able to do it in that first swing, and now he's playing defense with a bat. 0 oh, 2. It's very old school stylistically, right? I'm going to keep throwing that four seam until you prove you can hit it. Pitch number 40 for Cole. And he misses badly. And not only is he facing Cole, he's also dealing with an umpire who, as you guys have discussed, has a reputation for a pitcher-friendly strike zone, and we've seen that so far tonight in Bill Miller. Slow chopper going to be a tough one. Vientos kicks his helmet, and he is thrown out by Fulpe. Slow roller, not a problem. Garrett Cole, no problem so far. Nine up, nine down. There goes the helmet, and there goes Vientos. Being Radio 6 Eastern for baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Stanton swings the first one. And this one will get into the seats. I want to thank the two million viewers that tuned in for the last edition of the Red Sox Yankees. And we're hoping for a similar number, maybe a little higher. Father's Day weekend at Fenway Park. Stan recognized that pitch and fouled it straight back. First time all year that Garrett Cole's retired his first nine or more batters. Sarah Lang's A game tonight. Just dropping information left and right. Like a Cole fastball. She was waiting for that Wednesday night. Oh, uh, she is exactly right. Sunday night's not enough. Needs Wednesday night. Just as soon do it every single night if she could. And, and she does even on nights that there aren't telecasts. All baseball all the time for our buddy Sarah Langs. One ball, two strikes here to Stanton. No, it's outside. Good look at the framing of Alvarez. Who right now is top five in both framing and blocking, and he has worked his butt off to become a good, good major league catcher. Got Stanton there with a high pitch. A little high slider there. Well, it's been the feature pitch all night. He's thrown more of these than any other pitch. It's not where he's trying to throw it, but nonetheless, got Stanton to miss it. Sometimes as a hitter you see it and you think it's going to break a little bit more than what it does. It did not. Verlander getting a little filthy here. That was a curveball. Donaldson. That's his eighth pitch he's seen tonight has not seen the number one. It's been curveballs or sliders. And there it is. As a hitter Eddie you see fastball up you see a pitch up. If you don't recognize spin, do you assume it's a fastball? Absolutely. And you swing and miss at a slider that's up. Absolutely. That's why the fastball curveball works well. Donaldson, this is a tough one here. Escobar backs up, long throw in the dirt. Oh! Mark Fientos, look what I found. Scoops it out of the dirt. Escobar threw a fastball, a two-seamer, and he made a good play at first base. Yeah, two-seamer, but over the top. And that's what makes it easier for Vientos 
to be able to pick it. See, he turns around and he doesn't come from down under. He comes from the top. Easier for a first baseman to pick it. A true hop right at him, and Vientos beautifully digs this one right out. Yeah. Ever wear a first baseman's glove? Yes. It, it, it's, there's a great security blanket about a first baseman's glove. It's a great camera shot, too, of how you do that. Start low and go high with the glove action. Yeah, ball's inside. Somehow the left leg of Rizzo avoided that pitch from Verlander, who falls behind 2-0. Mark Hanna last night, Vientos tonight at first base for Buck Showalter. Saw Pete Alonso in the locker room before the game. Had a good conversation with him. He seems to be getting better. No timetable there, but a good scoop from Vientos. You see him go back to the bag. He I wasn't did. on the bag. I did. Good presence of mind doing so. Look out. Every out is a commodity for Justin Verlander right now and you can see his reaction right there very appreciative of, of the effort now given the amount of pitchers used last night and in some cases pitchers being used three times in four nights the starters have got to go deep for both Showalter and Boone tonight see that water pull dirty trick on me there he pushed my push my button there cut me off I know. I, I wasn't. I was like, wait a second. What's going on? That's a dirty trick. Yeah. He muted you. He I muted did. me. I did. To two Rizzo left field. Fam to his right. He's there to make the play. Verlander has gotten through four. We'll have one, two, three coming up when we come back for the Mets. Over in the seventh, one nothing Jays. Way to go, Kevin. Latest update there. Adley Clutchman delivers the hit that ends Barrios's no hit night. We'll show you that in just a little bit. Back here, Garrett Cole just throwing seeds. 97 on that fastball. And both of these pitchers, very high percentage of strikes. Verlander, 10 of 13 first pitch strikes. And Cole has good. Struck out Nimmo his first time up and misses down in the dirt. Well, we got our pitchers duel so far, right? But Ver, but Ver, different Ver, styles though, right? Very different styles. Verlander really establishing that slider. We got to give him a lot of credit. We talk a lot about his fastball, and so yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go about it a different way, and he has. Two two. When you mentioned the fact that Cole hadn't given up any homers in his first seven starts, but in a game like this, that one swing changes everything. And Nima went yard last night. Nimmo got hit by a pitch right on that elbow pad yesterday. Not afraid to keep it in there. Got Brandon Nimmo wear the microphone early this season. Terrific personality. Grew up in Wyoming. Said part of the deal when you grow up in Wyoming is you got to get thrown off of a of an animal. And you wouldn't get on another one. Three two and this one just slapped into left field. Great things happen when good friends get together. So grab a glass, amigo. Our tequila is your tequila. Our casa is your casa. It's good to know that Clooney is with us on Wednesdays, too. Guy parties every night. <laughs> He's no quit. This guy speaks Spanish like I do. <laughs> True <laughs> concierge key right there. Why did you have to drop that? Huh? Up in the air. That's like name drop. Up in the air. Cole's got 10 of the first 10 as he bounces one to Starling Marte. Funny to look back on the video, Verlander hitting Marte in that game when he was pitching against Cole in 15, and now they're teammates. 
He bent out of the way, but Bill Miller said you didn't need to. That's a strike, and you can see the body language and the head shaking from Marte. Kazone had it nipping the corner. Grazing. One, two. Seeing those kind of swings off a fastball tells you all you need to know about cold stuff tonight. 97 miles an hour. Emergency hack. Happy to follow it off. Hi, Papa. Yep. That got sawed off. Cole's at first. Rizzo fires a perfect throw. And Cole was wondering, what, what are you doing over there? You have to love that, though. If you're Anthony Rizzo and your pitcher automatically goes over to first because he knows who you are. This is a routine ground ball to second. But the veteran pitcher at Garrett Cole gets over. <laughs> I love that. A sidearm <laughs> bullet, too. Dropped down with Laredo and gave a heater. <laughs> See the smile on Rizzo's face, too. By the way, that bat was sawed off. Good action on the heater. Twelfth man he's faced and ten first pitch strikes. <laughs> Donaldson is on a room. He's already choked up. If he hesitates, you don't get Marte. Where is Rizzo going? <laughs> Neil always chokes up, but he does here 0-2. He had a terrific at bat last night when LeMahieu was playing third base and off the line. There were two men on, and you could see he, he went all like Ichiro. He just slapped it down that third baseline, ended up scoring two. And he's gone. Boy, Cole is rolling. The Cole train has faced 12. He's got them all. McNeil punched out. He's got five of those. One hit. Verlander's fewest through four innings this season. This is a pitcher's duel. And the knuckle curve shows up here. To this is Coney's night to shine. I mean, we got a pitcher's way go going here. Verlander and Cole. Four perfect innings tied for the fourth longest beat for Cole's career. Sarah Lang's report six and two thirds. June 3rd, 22 against the Tigers, the longest. And a huge crowd on a Subway Series night at City Field. Verlander. He delivers and he gets the called strike to LeMayhew. It'll be LeMayhew, Carter Falefa, Billy McKinney, who's got the double. Hit of the game so far. Uh, it's outside. Well, Verlander, his sharp slider tonight, has produced six swing and misses. Garrett Cole, seven swing and misses on his four seam fastball. So there's your contrast in styles. That one's down. I mean, this is a tough one, but are we looking at what? Cole might be eight years from now. I mean, it's quite clear. Verlander does not have what Cole does with that fastball right now. Is this the evolution of, of what Garrett Cole may someday become? Yes, I think when you feel like, as Justin Ver Verlander does, I'm sure, is that when you don't have that good high riding fastball, you need to spot it more east and west, inside corner, outside corner more, like we just saw. And you need to develop your slider and throw it a lot more. Here's your 2-2 to LeMahieu on the ground to Lindor. He stays down. That's a short hop throw. Vientos bails him out, too. Let's get back to Kevin Connors for an update. Hi, right, Ravi. The first place Rangers start of the night. Three and a half games up on Straight Houston. Down. The Angels just four and a half Good out ball. and trying to slice Here into that. Field. Anthony Let's Rendon kind of in into no man's field. land right there. It's going to drop first in. No hits yet for Otani. He's got a modest 10-game streak, but the Angels lead one zip. Boy, Trout bearing down on you. The ball coming in. Obviously, it went past him. Angels and 
Phil Nevin, who of course was with Aaron Boone in New York for so long, doing a good job out there in Anaheim. Isaiah Kiner Falefa no, checks his swing and no swing according to the first base up. Watch here as Francisco Lindor comes up, and as soon as he stands straight up, didn't have much on that throw and says, My bad on that one, but thank you for picking me up. Mark Viento's uh, already two picks this evening. Nice job over there. Mark Hanna had played a nice first base as well with the picks defensively. What's up with the Edgar? Let's go. Gets the call. See the breakdown. Pitching off of his slider. More sliders than any other pitch, and it's a good one tonight. Challenge Connor Falefa foul tip into the glove of Alvarez. About that 96 miles per hour up in the zone. Just letting us know he does have it in his back pocket when he needs it. It's the best one he's thrown tonight. You can see the life on that pitch up in the zone coming right at you. No deviation. Just good carry right through the glove. He's retired eight in a row, 14 of 15. This was the guy he didn't retire. And he swings at the first one. And that's a confident swing from Billy McKinney. Nine home runs when he was down in the minors triple-A Scranton Wilkesbury in 40 games. And he locked him up there with a very good curveball. And you bring up a good point there, Carl, because he was not on the roster, so he really had to impress the Yankees for them to jump through the hoops of getting him on the major league roster. 40-man spot and a 26-man spot. Five punch outs for Furlander so far, and that one nearly, nearly hit McKitty. He probably thought about, do I stay here? Can I get hit? of injuries over the career of Justin Verlander including Tommy John a couple of years ago but he is in terrific shape and grinding it here tonight one and two that's hooked foul 40 years old just really impressed with the adjustments he's made tonight mm -hmm. and st starting to throw some decent fastballs in this inning as well kind of a little vintage Verlander but establishing his slider and throwing it often has been a a key to his success so far tonight. Take a look at what Justin Verlander has been able to accomplish when he has been on the mound. 18, 19, 21, 2, second, first, and first as far as Cy Young votes. Where he has finished. And the other guy, Garrett Cole, has got a whole bunch of Cy Young votes, just doesn't have that award yet. It's very rare that one player is traded at a trade deadline and it really shifts the balance of power. And that was Justin Verlander back when he was traded from the Tigers yes. to the Astros. 2 2. There you go. Verlander, 96, top of the zone. He'll walk off the mound. Feeling very good about himself. He's got six strikeouts. City Field, strikeout field tonight on a Wednesday night. Fifth. Six punch outs for Verlander. Cole, five. He'll get Lindor, Alvarez, and Brett Beatty. And you can see Verlander's pitch count to 84. Cole and efficient 57. The Yankees bullpen has been as good as anybody's in baseball, but the guys that are available tonight are not the guys that have got them that reputation and that credibility. The door hit it to Rizzo. Cole covered.
Ford in there, 96 miles an hour. Now, when you faced another guy who had similar credibility that you did, like what impact did that have on you as the day wore on and then you got into the game, Connie? Especially when they're throwing well, you notice. Lindor hits this one hard towards the gap, going back. Heiner Falefa, it's off the wall. Lindor breaks up Cole's perfect night. He's on second leadoff double. Hit that one hard. That's a velocity of 105. And this was a breaking pitch, 80 miles per hour, just hung right down the middle. You see how Trevino's reaching towards his right to go get it right in Francisco Lindor's wheelhouse. And Paquito Lindor on that one hits it hard, and he needs to start swinging it well from the left side, and he does it just that at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Steady diet of fastballs to Alvarez his first time up. He struck out. Starts him off with a breaking pitch, a slider to get ahead. Big spot for the rookie catcher. Sends this one to right. That's fairly deep. Bowers going back. He's at the wall, makes the play. Nice running catch by Bowers. Lindor tags and gets to third, but he went a long way. So it was Trevino in the third inning that could not get McKinney over to third with less, with no outs. On this one, you see him trying to go the other way, trading places with Francisco Lindor not giving himself up, hits it deep enough, far enough to right. He moves Francisco Lindor over to third, and that'll force the infield to come in. And they become affectionately known as the Baby Mets, and the chance for Brett Beatty is coming up. As they meet on the mound, we'll meet KC back in the studio. All right, guys, the Astros have won 11 of 14 at home, and they're up on the Nationals right now. And how about Jose Abreu hitting 304 in the month of June? He's got 12 runs batted in. That's tied for the most in the American League in the month. From Valdez, Mr. Quality Start, three scoreless. It's 2 0 in the fourth. And they need him to hit with Jordan Alvarez down for a while. Here we go with Brett Beatty. Alvarez moves Lindor to third. Infield in on the grass. Big swing is pulled through 98 by him. They've been pounding Beatty in during this Subway series. McKenney has to play a little shallower in left field. 0 oh 2. Got to protect from the jam shot. You have to trust the arm you have on the mound, and that's Garrett Cole to execute that pitch. And if he does well and doesn't get the swing and miss, it shouldn't be a barrel shot opposite field. Slider in the dirt. Trevino has been terrific at blocking everything, but be careful with Lindor down there at third. The 0 2. Right by him. 98 miles an hour. A huge strikeout for the second out of the inning. Sixth of the night for Cole. I think Cole showed who's driving the bus on this one as he shakes off twice on an 0-2 pitch to rear back and give him that one. And right on by. Trevino wanted a slider or a curveball. Yeah. Cole said no. I want this one. And now a guy who's been very good for the Mets, Tommy Pham. He looks at Cheddar at 99 right down Broadway. This one is rifle to right field. Bowers going back. He looked at the wall. He will not get it. Tommy Pham delivers a double. It plates Lindor. It's 1-0. Mets. As he pumps his chest three times, there hasn't been a fastball that Tommy Pham has not liked his entire big league career. Out over the plate. Look at the reaction of Garrett Cole. He knew it as soon as he hit it. 
That Byers was going to struggle to get to this one. Tommy Pham can hit the ball hard. Yeah, he's been so good for them in a year in which the offense has not been great. Pham has come through, and he does throw there. He picks up his 23rd run batted in. And a different hitter this year. Vigna saw Pham way off the bag there at second base and came up right at the throw down to Volpe, but it got out of his glove. Good hard secondaries by both Lindor when he was at second and Pham now at second base. Now Verlander gave up a double and then got the next three. Cole gave up the double to Lindor and got the next two, and then Pham got him. It's one nothing, and here's Escobar. No balls inside. That's off the plate. One ball, one strike. See Volpe, the shortstop, kind of listening in his ear for the pitch selection from Pitchcom as well. That's an <laughs> strike. You, know, you watch Bowers go back, and obviously there's a wall that juts out right where that ball landed. That's a home run that Pham ended up on second with at Yankee Stadium in four other ballparks. He's gone. Cole will strand the runner at second base, but some damage done tonight. It comes off the bat of Lindor, who releases a new shoe today. Got a chance to run to second. Then he got a chance to run home after Pham went to right. Cole not happy. He's behind Verlander and the Mets. It's one zip. Francisco Lindor, Verlander back on the mound. Then he starts this half inning off. Jose Trevino with a breaking pitch in there for a strike. 8 9 1 due up for the New York Yankees. And the only guy that's got a hit was the seven hole hitter, Billy McKinney. It was a double. Verlander coming off of back to back punch outs to end the fifth inning. He's got a half dozen of those, 86 pitches. Up is Jose Trevino right now with Oral Roberts being in the College World Series. Talk to him during the Red Sox game about that. And how about Pete Alonso? He had the whole Florida scouting report down. <laughs> That's a foul back. College World Series, folks, starts Friday. Eight teams in Omaha, Nebraska. That's it. Big name, brand name programs. You mentioned Oral Roberts with 51 wins. LSU, according to our Kylie McDaniels, got more prospects on their team than several major league teams do in their no. farm system. Any swing? No swing there. But should be exciting. College World Series starts Friday on ESPN. Day and night games. Let's show on turf. 2 2. Tony, you've never been to Omaha during that time? I was playing minor league ball in Omaha and had to leave town that, during that time. We had to go on a, a two week road trip to, to accommodate the College World Series. That was Rosenblatt. That is a fair ball by Trevino. Given chase in the corner. And Jose Trevino, boy, doubles on the hit of the night. Fourth of the game. Trevino, a leadoff double. See another curveball staying right there. And I thought Verlander threw a strike with one of those curveballs in a sequence two pitches ago and didn't get the call. And this one stays up just enough for Trevino to lace it right down the line. So a little bit unlucky for Verlander, but nonetheless, good job by Trevino taking advantage of that last one. Yeah. Such a critical inning after you get the lead, come out and put a zero up. 
And here's Volpe. Well, this is Volpe's job. He has to be able to move Trevino over to third base. That pitch I was talking about. Watch the frame. It looked like Alvarez got fooled back there. He didn't. He didn't get a good frame on that. That was in the box, without a doubt. Sometimes those big breaking curveballs are hard to catch like that. One one to Volpe. That's a good curveball there. One ball, two strikes. With those two breaking pitches, it doesn't even seem that there's any intent of being able to even trade places with Trevino the other way. Now with two strikes, you have to put this ball in play. Force the defense. Just fouls it off as he went back to that curveball again, and that's all he has seen in this at bat. Verlander's breaking ball packages tonight have been outstanding. That slider curveball combination has given Mets fans a roadmap to how this guy can continue to be successful. And be patient with this fastball as it continues to improve. Saw a couple of 95s in the last half inning. <laughs> so Francisco Alvarez there. He was asking for that pitch up. You know, but in the home park, you don't usually get the booze when the home pitcher steps off like that. But there's a whole bunch of Yankee fans at City Field tonight. One, two. Nope, it's outside. Outside. And high purpose pitch just to elevate again change a little bit of the velo the eye perception the depth perception see if he goes right back to the curveball or the slider some stirring in the Mets bullpen that's another one that's high at 96 early in the count it was Francisco Lindor actually playing behind Trevino but now it's McNeil that's trying to keep him close with no intent at all of hitting the ball the other way. There it is. It is the other way. Marte, good arm, shallow right. He will run on him. Here's the throw. A little high, and it gets past the third baseman, Escobar. Merlander there as it doesn't go into the dugout. Tony, I was surprised that he even took off and went to third. Now he overthrows him, but a throw, and we've seen Marte with the great arm from right field, make spectacular throws, gets behind it, just lets it go. Too much loft on it. But he was dead to right to third. That's where fortunate that that ball hit the railing and did not go into the dugout. Now the Mets bring the infield in. Here's Bowers, the leadoff hitter for the Yankees. We have seen a ton of pitches from Verlander tonight. Third time now that Bowers has seen Verlander. I'd go visit right now. He had to back up, had to run to go get that baseball. And with that time clock, it just speeds up. It's a great point. Five mound visits left, too, for the Mets. And he misses in at 96. Jeff Brigham is now getting loose in that Mets bullpen. Verlander has thrown 100 pitches. Two out to Bowers, who has seen 21, now 22 pitches from Justin Verlander. And it feels like it begs for a conversation, regardless whatever the conclusion of this plate appearance is. But going back, excellent adjustment by Volpe to be able to drive the ball to right field. Forcing the Mets to make a play. Three oh green light powers. And he threw him a slider up in that zone again. I like that Booney gave him the green light right there. He's had one of the better at bats against Justin Verlander, even though he doesn't have a hit to show for. And that he took a swing at that high slider. Two fly outs to right. 
Trevino is not a fast runner at third base, but it doesn't matter. Bowers delivers the clutch RBI. And how good has he been for the Yankees? With that RBI, his 14th, it's now a 1-1 ball game here in the sixth. I don't understand why they have not gone out to talk to Justin Verlander. There are over 100 pitches. You've seen this third time that Bauer sees Verlander. Want to give him a breather after he backed up third to go get the other ball. Now Lindor and Alvarez are having a conversation with Verlander, but game's tied with Giancarlo Stanton working around the batter's box. Well, John, Giancarlo Stanton's presence will kind of force Verlander to go after Bowers there. Yep. The respect for Stanton. But you're right, with all those mound visits still available, and the Verlander having to go over and back up third base. Leadoff double by Trevino is plated by Bowers. One down here in the sixth. Stanton has struck out twice, and that first one's in the dirt. Different circumstance, but last night the Mets gave Scherzer a big lead. Tonight, Verlander had a one-run lead, and he couldn't protect it for a half of an inning. That's down. The ability of both Trevino and Volpe to get on base, especially Trevino getting on base with that two-strike double, then Volpe two-strike fly out to right. One of the big reasons Verlander's in this situation right now. Tenuous, uh, tiring Verlander, 105 pitches. Stanton kills it here at City Field. No, down. And he now is likely to get a green light on 3 0. Oh. He is, and it's a hard one there. Escobar will go to second. McNeil. Oh! Jeff McNeil held the bag, able to turn the double play to get Stanton and end the inning. How about the squirrel? How about this play right here? First, that ball was scolded. And then McNeil flipping it over. Viento staying on the bag. That man right there loving it. Now back to square one, 1-1, one, one, bottom six. Dynamite defensive play. By the New York Mets, and we'll show you that. And there is a rocket again. Boy, they are hitting the ball hard. Mark Vientos, that was 114 miles an hour. And that was nothing compared to Giancarlo Stanton's 118 mile an hour missile. Don't forget the point three. That's the fourth hardest ball this season hit. Great play by Escobar. And that right there, McNeil, turning it, understanding that Giancarlo Stanton. Does not get down the line that fast. Stay focused, kid. The leadoff hitters have done their job tonight. Bowers <laughs> delivers the RBI, but he has seen so many pitches. 19 when that last at bat started. Nimmo has seen now 17 pitches. Ball's inside. Trevino thought about throwing down, and Nimmo nearly backed into what would have been his throwing lane. You know, that's one of the problems with catchers. When you th when you come up with that, you're not going to get a call. And that one, yeah, just a sliver. No, the ball's up. Two, one. Two balls and a strike. Great game tonight, one and one. Doubles have been the story until Vientos was the first single of the game. We had four doubles so far. Bowers also had that single to knock in the run. Verlander watches on. Nimmo fouls it off at the plate, and he got his foot. That one hurt a little bit. City doesn't need another toe story. <laughs> it's a violent slider down and in. 
No, it's off Ooh. the upper left part of his kneecap. That's hard to do. <laughs> Nearly did it again. It's a 90 mile per hour slider. The starter in the bottom of the sixth inning. It's Trot Nixon, the former Red Sox outfielder, that described Mariano Rivera's cutter as a violent cutter. And we're seeing some violent pitches tonight from both sides. 2 2, short lead, Vientos, and Nimmo sends this back a home plate. Tony, as the game wears on here, the, those middle innings where Cole was getting it and throwing it, 80 pitches and a warm night here in New York is starting to take its toll a little bit. And things tend to slow down, obviously, when the leadoff man gets on and bangs the first fastball right back up the box. Nimmo hits this one hard. That's going to get down Vientos. Wasn't sure where Bowers was, so he was careful. And now it's first and second, nobody out. We got a threat here. Kevin, what do you got? Well, Ravi, the Pirates lead the Central. They're over 500 this deep into the season for the first time Austin since 2016, Hedges. and they're up 5 1 on the Cubs right now. Austin Hedges, Andrew McCutcheon, and Carlos Santana have all homered. Of course, Pittsburgh trying to hold off teams like the Reds. Matt McClain, how much excitement is there around the baby Reds right now, who've won nine of their last 11 on the road? McClain is hitting 331 at 7-1. There's so much excitement that Eduardo's mom is going back to Cincinnati for what reason? Well, it's a Hall of Fame weekend over there, but she says, I need an Ellie picture. And if Batuca Perez says, I need a picture with someone, that someone's got it going on. Ellie is the star in Cincinnati. Ellie David Cruz has been unbelievable. You can watch him, you can't see it. He's a blur on the bases with power. And Cincinnati playing well. How about those plucky A's out west playing well on a win streak? Back here, 1 1. Matt Blake done with his meeting. And Starling Marte. With Vientos at second and Nimmo at first. Swings in one way outside the zone. 0 and 1. Remember last time up, Marte broke his bat, shattered his bat on a ground ball to second. So he was trying to cheat there and he throws him a slider. Donaldson and Rizzo in on the corners. Falls down one one. Will not go fishing for that one. Sort of predictable now when you think about Garrett Cole and how he established his fastball early in this game and kept throwing it until they proved they can hit it. Now's the adjustment period to break out more breakage pitches. Oh, it's outside. Way outside. Vientos 114.9 single the Nets hardest batted ball of 2023. Not Pete Alonso, it's now Mark Vientos with 114.9 off the bat. The Hardest hit batted ball of 23. Marte sends that out of play. By the way, the 118.3 that we saw Stanton hit one to third base was the hardest hit batted ball Verlander has allowed under Statcast. That was 2015. And ended up in a double play. Jimmy Cordero is warming in the Yankee bullpen. 2-2 Two -two to Marte. Way late on that fastball at 99 and elevated. Garrett Cole rears back, picks up strikeout number eight. Is that what you call pitching backwards, Tony? Yeah, I mean, he threw three sliders to kind of set him up. And you think this guy retains his velocity or reaches back for a little extra at times? There's your proof at 99. Marte and Lindor struck out last night by Holmes late in that game with the bases loaded. He goes down again tonight. And here's McNeil. Last night, in a similar situation, slapped one down the third baseline. Wow. 
<laughs> that was 99 and that got a lot of the K zone and Cole knows it. And for a guy that's called a lot of pitches strikes tonight. That looked like a Bill Miller miss. Way out in front of that 91 mile an hour changeup. Is that his first changeup time? First changeup of the game on either side. And a good one there, broken out by Garrett Cole. On his 88th pitch, the first changeup. Well, let's see. So you've gone changeup. You just threw a slider there. And you try to blow one by him up top again. If you're going with the backwards pitching. He got he got McNeil last time with the knuckle curve way yep. out in front. So that's probably in his mind right now. So Garrett Cole could go one of two different ways. He could try that again or up the ladder. If you're going to go heater, this is a guy, a hard guy to strike out. You better try to get him to chase. Terrific bat control and as difficult a guy in baseball to strike out. And he will not get him here, but this is a pop up to center where Connor Falefa makes the easy play. So with two on, he gets Marte to strike out, McNeil to fly out, and here comes Lindor. Before that, a reminder, Clayton Kershaw getting set, warming up. Terrific numbers. It just keeps going and going and going. Eight and four, 295, 13 starts this season. Just feels odd. Los Angeles looking up at somebody in the standings out west, but it's the Diamondbacks. As Kershaw gets the ball tonight against the White Sox. That game on ESPN2. In about 35 minutes. Lindor doubled his last time up on an off speed pitch. And that one is going to get out of play. Tony, you, you see the Yankees a lot, a lot more than, than we do. A Braves warming up in the bullpen with your number one on the mound. Why? Well, I think that's Cordero. Cordero, Cordero, but why is Cordero warming up in the bullpen? I think if, if Cole gives it up here, he, he wants to try to protect him if his pitch count gets too high. Inside. And Cordero's, he's been very good. Everybody in that Yankee bullpen has been good this year, so. Cordero's your guy to come in with a hard sinker and a hard slider to face a tough right-handed batter. Maybe if it gets to Tommy Pham again. No. Why do you ask that? Do you think it would bother a pitcher like an ace? It's, it's not about bothering a pitcher. It's the last part when you said the ace. And you expect an ace to have a little bit more leeway than the others. And when Cordero started getting up, he was still in the 70s when it came to pitches. 1-2 to Lindor. Here it comes from Cole. This is high. But you go back to the visit on the mound, it sort of gave him a breather where Garrett Cole could now just sit back and say, okay, I need to get after Marte. He did, struck him out. McNeil flying out to center and now focused here on Francisco Lindor. Two two ranging over into foul territory. There's room. Donaldson's under it. And Garrett Cole. Gets out of it. Lead off single Vientos. Nimmo followed him, and then he gets three in a row. Well, the two starters were outstanding tonight. Verlander now out of the game. Garrett Cole, TBD. But both needed to get outs and did, and as a result, we're sitting here. In a 1-1 ball game as we start the seventh. And Jeff Brigham now on to pitch for the New York hey. Mets. And the first pitch he throws is in there for a strike. Brigham appeared last night. He's got an 073 whip, lowest mark in the National League, second lowest in the majors among relief pitchers who have made at least 20 appearances in this 25th game for Brigham. No 
No balls, two strikes. Donaldson, then Rizzo and LeMayhew. They will not chase. An interesting season for Verlander. There's been some really good, like tonight, and there's been some bad. His numbers against the Yankees coming in were very, very good, especially his last six starts. And he delivered a gem tonight. Got it right. He feels good about himself after tonight's performance. Really, all the Mets fan base should feel good about what they saw from Justin Verlander tonight. He, he showed a roadmap forward with all the talk around his fastball. Everybody, including us, were talking about the movement profile on his four seamer. He's not throwing as hard. It's not riding as much. Well, he showed you how to kind of go to plan B tonight and then still threw some good fastballs later in the game. No. So a very encouraging effort by Justin Verlander. His slider was really good tonight. No walk, six punch outs. He pitched off of a slider early and then threw some good heaters late. Donaldson, a matrix move to get out of the way of that. And now a 3 2 from Brigham. The ball's inside. And there you go, a walk. I haven't seen any of those tonight. Well, this is what we're talking about. 90 miles an hour at sliders, upper 80s, and then the curveball in the 70s. You're talking about back and forth pitching, front to back, and then later on, vintage Verlander at 96 at the top of the zone. So very patient, kind of brought along his fastball and then got it late. 14 swing and misses on Verlander's pitches tonight, led by the slider, eight whiffs on that particular pitch. Verlander and Cole had not walked a batter. Brigham comes in, he walks Donaldson. And now Rizzo. Ouch, and now he hit a man. So we've seen two things we haven't seen all night. Brigham's looking for Rizzo to try to get out of the way. I don't think he had a chance to get out of the way. That was a heat-seeking pitch. First of all, Anthony Rizzo doesn't get out of the way. Yesterday also got hit by a pitch on his toe, I would say, this time on the left forearm. Chuck the ball. Strong man there. Try to get in the mindset now of a guy that follows Verlander in a tight game, Brigham. And the depleted bullpen, no Drew Smith. Rejected last night before he threw a pitch after coming in. They checked his hands. Reason given, just too sticky. Didn't have an opportunity to clean anything off, so he's thrown out and now serves a suspension. So Buck Showalter is down a man in the bullpen. And Brigham has put himself in a bad spot with a walk and a hit batter, and now D.J. LeMayhew. Earlier in his career, and certainly with the Yankees, made a living of delivering in these spots. That's on his own. This is why DJ LeMay is so valuable because he understands. Let's try to force Escobar in a couple more steps at third base. Still has the ability to drive the ball to right field. He needs to move that runner over. Miller called that ball a strike. It's 0-1. Down. Home plate's moving around back there a little bit tonight. <laughs> Big spot for LeMayhew in the seventh, and he one, towels that one off on a cutter at 90. Trying to take the second of this two game series and sweep a quick subway series against the Mets. Well, you are exactly right, Eduardo. I mean, the lost art of producing a productive out. Obviously, you want to get hits whenever you can. 
when you sacrifice a little exit velocity for a productive out here to the right side somewhere. Try to advance the runner, or both runners if possible. Brooks Raley is up for the Mets now. 1-2. Set up outside. That's a great take from LeMahieu as it just missed the strike zone. And we're seeing we're seeing better at bats from DJ early on this year. It's been a lot a lot of swing and miss. We haven't been accustomed to seeing DJ swing and miss as much, but since yesterday, especially with that hanging breaking ball, he went deep. Things could change. Staying alive there on a late. Emergency hack at 91. He's had great success against the Mets in his career, an over 300 hitter. That home run last night was the first for DJ in 12 games. May he's always had a disciplined approach. He hits the fastball the other way, and he pulls the off-speed pitches. Donaldson's at second. Rizzo is at first. Brigham is on in the relief of Verlander in a 1-1 game with nobody out and two on. Call strike three. The Mayhew is gone. Big strikeout for Brigham. Pretty in pink. Just a little rug burn right on the outside corner. Just Molly went all the time. He did. He did. Perfectly framed as well. Show it. You mean flopped? Perfect, perfectly flopped? <laughs> Isaiah Kiner Falefa next up. Will not swing at the first one. It's outside. 1 0. Oh. Trying to avoid the three strikeout night is Kiner Falefa. That's middle infield squeezed up the middle as McNeil covers now goes back, and that's a strike. Hey! It almost implied that as a shortstop, he had a different approach offensively than he does as a center fielder. It was just a different way of thinking. Yes, and I, the, the Yankees hitting instructors have worked with him. They, they've always thought there's more in there for him. They, they felt like he got preoccupied with playing defense at short last year and then kind of struggled at the end of the year. And, you know, this year a different mindset. Hey, you've got your strong kid. You've got more to give. Load up. Let it go. Pick your pitches. And four homers all of last year, Carney. He's got three in his last 13 games. Yes. There are the three homers. He has a chance to be one of the most valuable super utility guys. He can actually catch as well. Brigham looking for a ground ball. There it is, Lindor. McNeil will not get him, and that one gets away from Vientos, and that will allow the go-ahead run to score. Boy, Vientos has been great all night at scooping balls, and this one got by him, and it allowed the run to score from third. And that's also one that you have to know the runner. Right? Just put this one in your back pocket right there. Instead, he throws it, pulls it, and look at Vientos' left foot where it's at. By the time it gets to where he's trying to get, it's too stretched out, too spread apart with his legs. Hard to get to that ball from where he's at, moving towards his right and gets past him. No need to be that spread apart at first base. As good as defense as he's played early on, this one cost him a run. Yeah. Fielder's choice, 6-4, E-4, no RBI, but no longer is the game tied. A really nice night with the picks. Saw that one right there early on. This one by Francisco Lindor as well. Gets it, saves him from an error. This one to his right, dives a little bit. You wonder if he should have or not, but this one just, the legs too spread apart. Not thrown perfectly, but it's a play that the average first baseman usually makes. Billy McKinney now against Brooks Raley. He swings at the first one. The error from McNeil 
Gives the Yankees a two to one lead. Long half inning for Cole to Outside. rest. With the assumption that he's coming back. And there are the numbers on the lefty, Rayleigh. He was activated off the IL in the middle of May. He's about one run of 13 games so far. The other part of that inning, too, remember Donaldson was walked, Rizzo got hit by the pitch, so the walk comes back and scores that run against the Mets. Yankee scored that run without a hit. 1-1, one, one, runner goes, got a good jump. Alvarez throws way off, it goes into center field. And Isaiah Connor Falefa is in there at third base, and he picks up his seventh stolen base. Of the season. Aggressive. Kinder Falefa got a terrific jump. Well, not a lot of footwork there by Alvarez behind the plate. When he throws it, it sailed on him. And no chance for Francisco Lindor at all to get Isaiah Kinder Falefa in the baseball. It's halfway down the third base line. Oh, here he comes. Steal of home, and he will do it. Isaiah. Falefa ran around the bases, and the Yankees got a 3-1 lead. Brooks Raley never gave him a look. Watch him creep down the line. Throwing from the windup as a lefty, very deliberate. As soon as he starts his motion, he's gone. Two runs without a hit and a communication breakdown as that ball is sent in between Lindor and Escobar. McKinney is aboard again with his second hit of the night. I'm just surprised. How come Eduardo Escobar, nobody's yelling, nobody's helping Rayleigh out there? A whole lot of nothing going on there, except for Kiner Falefa about halfway off, halfway down the line, and nobody saying anything or even noticing. Watch this, Escobar at third. A whole lot of nothing. Perfect time to do it with two outs as well. That's outside. Is it me? Or is it that this year Isaiah kind of Falefa is just playing with a lot more confidence? Freedom. Well, I'm shocked that nobody was yelling to Brooks Rayleigh. And perhaps at the end of the game in a post game we'll hear that they were and he couldn't hear them but there wasn't a lot of movement from anybody other than Kiner Falefa who stole second advanced to third and then comes in and scores by stealing home. No it's outside. Relievers have let him down tonight. Brigham with the walk and the hit batter. Rayleigh allows that steal a home, and now he's behind three and one to Trevino after giving up the hit to McKinney. You ever had a call of a stolen home? <laughs> no. Steal at home? That's a first, right? Certainly at the major league level. From the windup, too, Rayleigh. And generally, if he's a left handed pitcher, if he's from the stretch, his back's to the runner. He was he actually could almost see him. Popped up. McNeil going out. Marte coming in. McNeil said he has it. But an aggressive inning for the Yankees and mistakes. And a messy half for the New York Mets. Here he comes and there he goes. Steal a home from Isaiah Kiner Falefa. The Yankees in the Subway Series trying to take them both. Boreas did it back in August 27th of 2016. And the New York Mets just made a mess of that inning and wasted a great Verlander start. 
now trail 3-1. Jimmy Cordero is on the mound. And here comes some gas, Balls and there's inside. that first one at 97 miles an hour. High strikeout rate. He's only walked eight of 105 that he has seen. And it's a good pitch there at 97 that hurt Jose Trevino. So we'll have a little pause here from Bill Miller. Help out the catcher. You know, a lot of times you'll see the base runner at third base try to distract a pitcher, maybe induce a balk or something, but he was so far down the line, and Eduardo Escobar was standing there at third base. The Mets dugout didn't appear to be yelling at all. Alvarez didn't see him. First baseman didn't alert the pitcher to it. You guys brought up an interesting point. You know, Rayleigh, if he were able to maybe drill the hitter, you know, the ball's dead and the runner goes back. It almost looked like that's what he's trying to do from the windup. It's the only shot he had for him not to score. So the field has grown quiet after that. How about what Isaiah Connor Falef has done after being booted off a shortstop in a sense? They brought in the youngster Volpe, and Connor Falef didn't really have a position. Now he's establishing himself as a very valuable member of his team. Of course, Harrison Bader is your everyday center fielder. And Judge is out there and right, but you're going to be a position for that guy. Never really played outfield before this year. Now he's playing center field. Three two to Alvarez. It's fouled off Miller, the umpire. Shallow left field. That's going to get down. Alvarez, 74 miles an hour off the bat, but that is a leadoff single. Perfect time to do it with two outs and win the pitches from the windup. Takes off immediately. You hit the hitter, he goes back. And look at the stat cast numbers here. Sprint speed. Getting in, topping off around 25 and a half feet per minute. Yeah, he had to run 45 feet from that point. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool graphic. Though. Another one to left. This one is playable for McKinney. And there will be one down as Beatty flies out. 2023 Scott's MLB All-Star Ballot is now open. Scan the QR code or visit MLB.com slash vote. Vote daily. Decide who represents your favorite team this summer. That is the 2023 Scott's All-Star Ballot now open. QR code on the screen. Feels like a long time ago when Fan delivered a big hit, but he does another. This time into left field, and the Mets are in business here. In the bottom of the seventh, they got two on against Cordero. Fam's got two hits tonight. 99 mile per hour sinker hit at 95 miles per hour off the bat. Inner part of the plate, bring the hands in. Tommy lights it. He can hit a fastball. Either of you guys surprised that Cole's night ended? Was it the long half inning? Was he just done with the number of pitches? I think he really expended himself the last couple of innings. Uh -huh. He also had some cramping issues a couple of starts ago. Escobar up the middle. Volpe. Tag. No double play. He slapped the tag on Pham. Really didn't have a flip throw to get a double play. And now it's first and third. Just hit too softly as he's got to come and get it. You can't wait for that ball. You got to go get it. At that point, thinks better of throwing it to first. Maybe he tries to wheel and look at third. 
And there's been a lot of talk about Volpe in the papers and on the radio about, you know, the idea that he's been in such a hitting slump. Maybe you think about sending him down. And the dedication to Volpe being on the major league team from Boone and everyone else is really rock solid. And he certainly has earned that, especially given his ability to make adjustments as he was coming up to the minor leagues. He always seems to start slow and figure it out. But maybe he's doing that again. We'll get an update from Kevin Connors in the studio in just a minute. We got two down here with runners at first and third. Mark Vientos, who also can hit a fastball up here as a go-ahead run. Ball's down. One ball, no strikes. Walter talked about the Yankee bullpen. He thinks, given the arms that they march out there, that it is as good a bullpen as there is in the big leagues. The number of guys that can throw 100 with movement, he says, is as good as there is in baseball. The numbers will back it up. But Cordero finds himself in a 3 0 hole. Brandon Nimmo on deck. Arnaccio warming up? Yes. Aaron Boone told us he was going to have to get creative late in the game to get these final outs. <laughs> Taking all the way, three and one. about whether you pitched last night or not if you're a reliever for, for managers it's the three out of fours or yeah. consecutive days that add up Ball's down. all four to Vientos and Cordero has now walked the bases loaded here in the seventh and here comes Aaron Boone which likely means here comes Ron Marinaccio Makes the sign to bring in the righty. Well, here we go. Two out, bases loaded, down two, bottom seven. And the Mets got their leadoff hitter coming up. And it's Brandon Nimmo Hill face. Alvarez at third base. Escobar is at second base. And Vientos at first. Marinaccio's first one. Just misses in at 93. Ball one. Yankees three, Mets one. Yankees get one in the sixth, two in the seventh. And Nimmo got sawed off there and fouled it back. For Marinaccio and Nimmo in this matchup, it's going to be hard and soft away. The really good changeup from Marinaccio is in play here. Last four seed fastball on 92 miles an hour. Oh, and he hit him. Nimmo didn't move. He will be called back, or is he going to point him to first base? No, he pointed him to first base. <laughs> That's going to bring a run in. Miller for a second had Nimmo's attention, like, are you saying I didn't get out of the way and I got to stay? But instead, a run comes in. Marinaccio hits him. It's a one run game. <laughs> So the back of Brandon Nimmo's mind most likely is like, uh oh, I'm going to wear it again in the same place as yesterday. Same thing happened yesterday to Brandon Nimmo. This time he drives one in. Now Marte struck out with the bases loaded yesterday, but Marinaccio four seam fastball at 91. Marinaccio threw 21 pitches yesterday. Inside. 
Knew your bullpen was taxed. Cole comes out of a game. And Marinaccio's no nearly inside. hit Marte. It's 3 and 0. Oh. How many of you at home are saying take two? Or take three? There is a strike. Escobar is at third, Vientos at second, Nimmo at first. Marte, good hitters count, 3 1. Rips that one, that's in the left field. Here comes Escobar, and that will be it. And they have a chance to throw behind Nimmo, they do. Out he's called, oh! Brandon Nimmo too far off. He thought Vientos was going to be waved in, and the swim move didn't work. Buck Showalter's got his hand up. He's waiting to hear from his replay official. They're going to appeal it. Let's see. Did the left hand get in before the tag? Oh. The New York Mets are challenging the out call at second base. That say. is close. It's, now, because he was called out, it could stand, but keep an eye on this one right here. I think he's safe. See if the glove hits the chin right here. This will be a good shot. I don't know if that's enough to overturn. It's really close. In New York, they are looking at it as closely as you all are at home, and they probably have a few more angles. But this is a huge, huge call. Nimmo obviously didn't look up at Vientos, who was held at third base on that shot from Marte. That man right there is hoping for that to be reversed. Because when you are running from first to third, you better keep your head up if you have a lead runner. And he did not. Joey Cora holding clearly the runner at third. He's safe. That was a good shot right there. Yeah. Here comes the call. After review. The call in the field stands. Wow. Instant replay confirms the call. Nimmo out. Game tied. Well, Brandon Nimmo. Rounded second as if there was no question in his mind that Vientos was scoring and Vientos Cora put the brakes on him Bad base running cost the Mets. We are now tied. But they otherwise would have had the bases loaded. With McNeil coming up. Bumpy uh, couple of nights for Nimmo with the play in the outfield last night, and then that base running mistake there. Yeah, and for as good as Brandon Nimmo has been in the batter's box, in the outfield, that's always been his Achilles heel, base running. Adam Adovino, the next pitcher for the New York Mets, as we start the eighth inning. And he gets a strike there. Great conversation with Adam Adovino, Tony and I had in the clubhouse before the game about how he's pitching totally differently than what we have become accustomed to. Yeah he is a master of the technology has his own shop in Harlem in the offseason that other players go to. <laughs> One two Volpe down the line fair ball and he's going to take off to second base Marte picks it up Anthony Volpe delivers a double to lead off the eighth sinker that got up 
Two strikes again for Anthony Volpe taking the ball the other way. The other time was moving Trevino over to third. And this time, ball just too much of the plate on a one-two count. Changes his stance on the off day, and it's been paying dividends yesterday and today, just in time for the Subway Series. These two teams punching back and forth. They are. Answering. Jake Bowers has a single, an RBI, and two flyouts, but you could make the case he's had as good a bats as any Yankee tonight. Fastball four seamer. Talk about sweepers and sliders. Adovino made a living. Now he's gone back a little bit more to his sinker, but he's used all the technology. And then he's also said, "You got to read the batters." Well, traditionally, he talked about the historically speaking, he was always encouraged to throw two seamers to left-handed batters. Yep. And those tend to flatten out, stay on plane, and get hit hard. So four seamers to left, he's in. Two seamers to right, he's in. It's kind of been the change over the last 20 years. Goes down. Too much. Verlander and Cole were absolutely outstanding. This game was 0-0. Zero, zero. Into the bottom of the fifth when the Mets finally broke through to score the first run of the game. Everything changed once the bullpens were activated. And both managers acknowledged Mike the bullpens were tired. Trying to wonder if Bowers was doing that on his own or not, right there. On a 2 1 pitch, squaring around the bunt. I believe he was. Wicked pitch right there, and that's what Ottavino has become known for. That cutter in hard to a lefty. Kind of see Anthony Volpe dancing around out there. That's one of Ottavino's weaknesses. It's very slow and deliberate to home plate. Can be taken advantage of. Second disengagement right there. What he does at second base, how far he dances off, and he's doing it again. Arvino will come home, and he strikes him out. Filthy cutter to get Bowers. Go back to the play that ended the seventh. Watch Cora, the third base coach. You can see him waving. Now breaks her on, and here comes Nimmo into the shot. Yeah, and that's one that Caw could have gone either way. And it went the way that many here in this ballpark did not think it was going to go. But as a base runner, knowing that you are a trailer, you have to see ahead and make sure that Mark Vientos was going home on that in order for you to go. Just had his head down the whole way. The entire time. Joey Cora's got some conversations after the game or even tomorrow with both Vientos on the defensive side of things. And now with Brandon Nimmo also on the base running. First base open. Here's Giancarlo Stanton. Pitch carefully here. Good numbers against him. Four for 11, two homers, four Ks. All right, not a big fan if I'm a hitter right now, Giancarlo Stanton up at the plate. I want that runner at second base. I want him to stay still. He's already in scoring position. Oh. 
field. Miller, I heard him say something about a violation. Did they call McNeil for being on the other side of the bag? Yes, that's exactly what they're calling. As McNeil was playing like a first baseman, holding Volpe on the bag, actually straddled the bag and broke. Here comes Buck Showalter. The shift rule. This is interesting because McNeil, if I'm not mistaken, was on the. Oh no! Watch his foot. It was actually on the shortstop side of the bag. He's right. Very good call by Bill Miller. Yeah, he split second base in half, and his right foot was on the other side. It wasn't on the dirt on the other side, but it was on the right side of the bag. As soon as that foot is on that side of the bag. Yeah, it actually is. Isn't that on the dirt? This angle makes it look like it is on the dirt. Well, Bill Miller from home, from home plate yeah. seeing it. So he's trying to say that's where he was, and that's not where he was no. originally. And that's probably not the spirit of the rule either, exactly. that call. So one ball, one strike, and Adovino looks Volpe back. The spirit of the rule change was to prevent major shifting, not a little subtle foot on the wrong side of the bag. So technically the right call, but not in the spirit of the, of the rule. 1-1 one, one to stand, 2-1. and one. From the dugouts, you, and you've heard this so many times, players chirp and say, don't forget about the hitter. Right now, you cannot forget about number 27, Giancarlo Stanton. Volpe wants to dance around, wants to steal third, so be it. You have to execute your pitches with Giancarlo at the plate. He has lit up City Field, 24 career homers here, and he did not look good on that one. So no violation against McNeil, that's strike three. Change up down and in from Ottavino. He talked to us about switching up his patterns. We've never seen him do that before. Two balls, two strikes. Volpe nearly went. Stanton high chopper. Lindor backs up. Strong throw. Boy, it looked like Volpe was just going to go on his own. There's a second out. Now it's up to Josh Donaldson here in the eighth inning of the tie ball game. Far will Volpe come down the third base line? Donaldson pops it up. Fam is under it. Ottavino gets out of it. A whole lot of action after Volpe let off with a double, but he gets stranded at third. We'll see McNeil, Lindor, and Alvarez after this. From the city for music. Good game tonight here. 3 3, Tommy Kane Leon. And he has worked his way back into this bullpen, and he has yet to allow an earned run. He'll get Jeff McNeil, Lindor, and Alvarez. Outside. His first pitch misses. It's got a report a simple on him. Mets gathering together, most likely said, be aware of the changeup. Has good life on it. Also throws in the mid-90s, but the changeup, not afraid to throw it back to back. Neal popped up on the infield. Here comes Rizzo. Easy run. So Jeff McNeil got together with his manager, Buck Showalter, and was explaining to him why he didn't think there was a violation on a ball that Stanton swung at that was then called the no pitch. It's also interesting that Chad Whitson was standing right behind McNeil, but it was Bill Miller, the home plate umpire, whose voice you could hear saying, that's a violation. kaylee has got one down, and he fires in a 96-mile-an-hour fastball to Lindor. And the way the numbers bear out, the advantage tilts towards the Yankees when it becomes a bullpen game. Wow, that was way off, and that's called the strike as well, and a change up to Lindor. 
that's a good timeout also by La Francisco going, wait a second, let me assess this zone right now. You have to open up a lot more and you have to give up the inside part of the plate now. Michigan Francisco. Tremendous movement on that pitch. Even sometimes umpires get fooled as well. Got him there. Lindor gone. 89 mile an hour changeup. There are still a few good ideas left in the world. Ours was to make our own tequila. Grab a glass, amigo. Our casa is your casa. It's just a reminder the party just keeps going. Yeah. Say it all the time now. <laughs> our casa is your casa. Sunday night on Wednesday night. Exactly right. It ends in a Y. Balls down. This is in. 2-0 to Alvarez. Twelve home runs on the season. David Robertson warming in the New York Met bullpen. Two balls, no strikes. Oof. There's all sorts of power in that bat, in that body, and he was he was swinging for the bridge. You see why he was the top ranked prospect. No stride and tremendous leverage and speed. Good one there. 90 mile an hour changeup. And back in the count is Tommy Canely at two and two. Left that one up. Got away with it. Not afraid to throw that change up to lefties and righties. He had right biceps, tendonitis, missed the first 58 games of the season, did Canely. Here's your 2 2. That's inside. inside. Three balls, two strikes. Definitely in the category of a power changeup in the low 90s and upper 80s. Felt a little bit like old school baseball the last couple of nights here at City Field. Even with a pitch clock, but all sorts of nuance now to the game, and we certainly saw it with McNeil there at second base. 3 2, that's foul. It really has been back and forth for these two games. Yankees with a big comeback last night. And that's coming back in this this game as well. It's a nice comeback last inning, otherwise marred by the minimal base running. Right. Bench Porter, bench, and Alvarez now on that list, but that will not be one that leaves the yard. His bat almost did, but the ball did not. Ends up in the glove of Trevino. He strikes out. Back-to-back -back punch outs of Lindor and Alvarez. Rizzo, LeMayu, Carter Falefa in the ninth of a tie game. Man new and included for 2023. Watch all minor league baseball and live look-ins on MLB Big Inning. No blackouts. Visit MLB.com slash at bat for details. Part of the fifth largest regular season crowd in City Field history tonight, 44,121. And now David Robertson, one of those guys that has pitched for both the Yankees and the Mets, on to face Anthony Rizzo, DJ LeMayhew, and Isaiah Hunter Falefa. 3-3, ninth inning. And Rizzo. You give it a second. Well, I thought for the life of me it hit Anthony Rizzo. No, oh, hit right in front of the home base. plate. Home plate. Actually, they're giving Francisco Alvarez a breather here. Bill Miller asking for more baseballs. It, it hit him on the top part of the chest protector. But it just thudded at home plate. And we've seen that already with Rizzo tonight. He got hit by that pitch in the seventh inning. But all clear. <laughs> 84 mile an hour knuckle curve from David Robertson. <laughs> Talked with us earlier in the 
Clubhouse his elbow feels so good. He's, he's just ready to go and go and go. His stuff looks as good as it ever has. Up to 94 miles an hour with that four seam cutter. And he's always had a really good breaking ball. Three curve balls to Rizzo, and he got him there. Knuckle curve from Robertson. Let's go back on the seventh inning. Huge inning here. Isaiah Kyra Falefa. Nobody yelled and alerted Rayleigh a steal of home. And then Marte tied the game up, and Nimmo didn't put the brakes on and didn't see the car in front of him. He banged right into it and was thrown out, trying to get back to second. That ended the inning. Otherwise, bases would have been loaded. Well, Mayhew swings at one and misses from Robertson. Good base, good base running versus bad base running and mental go. mistakes. strike and Robertson followed Rivera and it, they, they just almost mirrored each other it was like Robertson was Mariano Rivera light he, he had that same late cut that became such a weapon that's a fair ball it's off the tarp and that's going to allow LeMahieu to get into second easily Pham didn't know if it was going to get all the way down into the corner instead of hit off the tarp and DJ LeMahieu Starting to warm up for the Yankees. The last couple of nights, Homer and tonight a double. Yeah, and it keeps this one fair too. Coming up for his fourth at bat, 0 for 3. Salvages the night with this double right down the line. And the breaking ball just kind of stayed on the inner part of the plate, allowing DJ to drop the barrel. So DJ LeMahieu with that double. He's out of the game. And the pinch runner is in at second. And now we'll have a meeting on the mound. Labor Torres has got a bat. Oswaldo Cabrera is the guy who is at second base and will be running against Robertson. Torres will hit for Kiner Falefa. Wheels are spinning. First base is open. McKinney on deck. Fourth double of the game for the Yankees. Good job there. It's a guy who's really improved his blocking. Alvarez with one out, keeping that runner off third base. Alvarez much more athletic than I thought he was back there. The way he moves, he runs fairly well. We know about his power. Labor 252, 11 homers, 28 RBI. Big swing there and a miss. A slider that was up. Don't throw that same pitch to him, though. McNeil on the right side of the bag this time. Keeps an eye on Cabrera. Breaking pitch nearly hit Glaber Torres. McKinney's got two hits. He's got a double and a single. He's next up. Glaber Torres pinch hitting, trying to give him the lead. No, ball's down. Three well, one. really well, but did not get the call. And that has been a strike, certainly on many occasions tonight. And K Zone. And Bill Miller, they'd have a good conversation after the game. It's been both ways. Ball four, Flavor Torres. Now Robertson 
He's going to get Billy McKinney. Kenny Trevino and Volpe have been outstanding at the bottom of the order tonight. Four for nine, a run, three doubles, and the rest of the team tonight just two for 21. You have to be aware of the first pitch that McKinney likes to go after it. a 93 mile an hour cutter down the middle. Escobar about even with the bag. McNeil deep at second base. They're hoping for a ground ball double play. McKinney slow roller and they'll get one as it stepped on the bag is Viento. So second and third now. Jose Trevino had a bat. Jose Trevino's going back to the bench. Looks like, is that really Calhoun? Yes, it is. Really Calhoun's going to pinch hit. Aaron Boone emptying out the bench this inning. Guys that have contributed tonight for the New York Yankees. With the big hits. And certainly, guys at the beginning of the year, you probably didn't expect to be making huge contributions. Calhoun's another one of those guys. Signed as an extra outfielder. What a spot here, second and third. First pitch is way inside. The entire bench of Aaron Boone will be used this inning. Kyle Higashio. Kyle Higashioka, one way or another, will come into this game on the defensive standpoint in the bottom half of the inning. Next one to Calhoun gets a piece of the <laughs> corner, according to Miller. Two forty batting average for Calhoun, five homers, sixteen runs batted in, OPS of seven twenty five. One ball, one strike. Calhoun, chopper, Escobar cuts it off, throws across the diamond, and he gets him. The Yankees threatened in the top of the ninth, could not score. It's now up to Brett Beatty, Tommy Pham, and Eduardo Escobar. Robertson pitches in and out of trouble. Vientos. All right, we're fine. We're good. Ball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Albert Abreu now on for the New York Yankees with Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, I'm Carl Ravitch. And the first pitch at the hey. bottom of the ninth inning of a tie game is in there for a strike to Brett Beatty. He's left the yard four times this season. Tommy Pham due up next. He's got a double and a single. Big swing from Beatty. Terrific numbers at the minor league level. And most Met fans clamoring to get this kid into the lineup and regularly playing. Number two from Abreu. 98 mile an hour sinker, and that had some movement. Yes, he's got a big arm. That's never been the question. We saw his base on ball rate a little bit high. That always has been the question. When he fills up the strike zone, He's tough. This ball to right. Bowers drifting into the corner and just short of the track. He's there to make the play. Set the outfield. Bowers in right still. Billy McKinney's move to center. Oswaldo Cabrera is now in left field. Labor Torres is at second base and Nagashioka is behind the plate. Down, dangerous hitter Tommy Pham. A couple of baseballs appear to be on the outfield warning track. And 
Cabrera cleans up the field and now it's Pham. First pitch is way away. So again, if we're tied after nine, the Manfred man will be on second base, as Coney likes to say. Special pinch runner, or a special runner, I should say. And in this case, it would be Kyle Higashio. 1 0. In and out of the glove of Higashioka. The Mets have nine walk off wins against the Yankees. Good pitch. Not giving in to Tommy Pham. 2 0 slider. If you throw it 2 0, you might as well throw it 3 1. Agreed. Oof. Ate him up on the ground to short. Play is made. The sinker at 98.6. Well, if you're going to throw it like that. <laughs> Okay then, I and mean, he's going to swing at a ball at 99 miles an hour with that kind of movement. Look at that ball just pouring in on Tommy Pham. It's a 3-1 count swing right there. It's a lot of life. Here's Eduardo Escobar. He swings at the first one. In 2023, the Mets have two walk-off wins. The Yankees have three walk-off losses. Escobar fouls that off. At a 98-mile-an-hour pitch from Abreu. It's sort of a great example of a modern-day bullpen. When your fifth or sixth best relievers throwing 98 and 99 with that kind of movement. 2023, tougher to hit than ever. Tonight, the Yankee bullpen four and a third. And they didn't give up anything tonight. Cordero got touched up for a couple of earned runs. A one two. Nice in the dirt. And after Cordero is Marinaccio, Canely, Abreu. Brigham came in. He gave up two earned runs. And then since then, Rayleigh, Ottavino, and Robertson have been. Lockdown. One and two. That's outside. Two two. A lot of offside miss with the fastball. The slider's been his pitch that he's been able to control in the zone. Here's Mike Breen. You saw the NBA Finals. Big New York Net fan. He's on hand to watch, see if Escobar can get in this bad boy. Or he's con confused by what the guy in front of him is doing. He's like, down in front. <laughs> Come on, guy. Down in front. <laughs> we don't worry about that with Look our at that look on his face. Seat courtside NBA games. Escobar is gone. 99. And the Yankee bullpen, as good as it's been all year, delivers here late. Arnaccio, Canely, Abreu. Extras in the Subway Series. Justin Verlander combined 12 innings, seven hits, one earned run each, and they struck out 14 men. Cole had eight, Verlander six. The big steal of home by Isaiah Kiner Falefa. And then the base running mistake by Brandon Nimmo. If he was not called out, the Mets would have had bases loaded. And a chance to grab a lead. Now we go to the 10th inning. Higashioka is the runner at second base, and full paint goes the other way, but that one is going to get out of play. Dominic Leone, the sixth net pitcher of the night. Good 
pitch there. And that seems to be a spot that Volpe is vulnerable to. Yeah, but he's been bearing down with two strikes tonight, driving the ball to right field. Wouldn't expect any other thing from him right now, feeling a lot more confident at the plate since yesterday. Got him there and elevated a little bit. 92 way off the plate. Volpe cannot advance Higashioka. Covered a couple of different looks on Leone. Leone's breaking stuff. This one a little harder. You can see Volpe just trying to put the ball in play the other way and gets fooled and chases. Here's Bowers. Miss. Good bite there, too. He owns around two runs over his last seven games. An 060 whip and opposing batters hitting the buck 38. Good job of blocking again by Alvarez. Gashioka not with the big lead, but Decent secondary at second. Plus arm in right field. Watch him stay down low right here. Don't try to catch it, just block it. Ninety-seven miles an hour, straight heat. Ball, two strikes. And Bauer spoils it. Bowers has been a tough out for all Met pitchers tonight. A lot of deep counts, seen a lot of pitches. Only 10 games on the schedule tomorrow. Both these teams will have an off day. Nimmo, Higashioka goes back and he will stay put as Nimmo fires it into Lindor. So two men down and Giancarlo Stanton comes up with first base open. Alvarez will go out and talk to Leon. Donaldson is on deck. Lindor comes in. been a giant Met killer. You see the most home runs against the Mets, 38 ahead of Harper and Freeman. Of course, many of those accumulated when he was with the Marlins. 24 long balls at this ballpark. You going to pitch to him? Yeah, I'm wondering what that man's thinking right now, Buck Showalter. I mean, it's, it's sort of a, do you mess around and okay, don't give in? Because you've got first base open or you just go ahead and put up four? Maybe try to get Stanton to chase. Got to elevate here. Very good low ball hitter. Misses away. All due respect to Donaldson, I'm not quite sure I, I'm following this right. line you, of thinking. You, you would rather just put up four fingers, right? Go ahead and take your base. You're going to have your runner on at second. I understand exactly what you guys are saying, but Giancarlo Stanton came into the series struggling as well, offensively. That's gonna it. walk him. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Two zero. Put him. Put him on. See if he would chase. He didn't on the first one. The second one was not really chaseable, and now Donaldson will come up with two men on. Or if you're a manager, you have to have a lot of trust in your pitcher to not give in, and then yeah. you're taking a chance there. So you're right, Carl. And if you're caught in between. Sometimes it's better just to go ahead and let him go to first base. And now here you have Donaldson. Small sample size, the 0 for 5. That's Higashioka 66. And Donaldson, Lindor backs up, goes to second. They will not score in the top of the 10. Nick Ramirez warming in that New York Yankee bullpen. 9 1 2 as the Mets come up in the bottom of the 10th of a 3 3 game.
at second. Rizzo is way in, guarding against a bunt. For Mark Vientos. Vientos is a middle of the order bat in the minor leagues, rarely bunts. Really would be surprised if Buck Showalter would put it here. Rizzo backs up, and that got a piece of the corner at 98. That's an unhittable pitch. Many of you at home would say, yeah, but he's not a middle of the bat guy now. Get it down. It's hard when you don't have a player that you've conditioned and trained to understand how to bump the ball, especially towards third when you have an excellent first baseman. Yeah, he doesn't know how to bump. Yep. 0 oh and 2. And there's a staring contest going on now between Abreu and Escobar. And this is inside. Outfield very shallow. Hear Bill Miller, which is great. This is why I've heard other people, including you, say it's great. They have mics. Let's hear it. He said you can't come set until he has made eye contact with you, Vientos. Again, all part of the minutia of baseball in 2023. Now Vientos is locked in. Where you can go. One and two. Wild swing and a pitch down and away, and he's gone. Comes Booney. He's got Ramirez, the lefty, warming for the lefty Nimmo. And after all that, a slider down and away in the chase. The challenge of the Yankees is going to be when they get a lead, they have a bullpen that has so many weapons. We'll take a timeout. This is loaded. Another chance to score, but here you go in the perfect symmetry of baseball. Nimmo has got a chance against Nick Ramirez, who's been just dynamite. Lefty on left. Escobar represents the winning run. And first pitch, a slow one in there for a strike. Outfield continues to play very shallow. Nimmo, right field, deep. That sends Bowers way back. Still going back. It's off the wall. Escobar, a slow start at second base. He's being waved in. Here he comes. Nimmo does it. And the Mets walk it off. And what a relief for Brandon Nimmo. Escobar was two feet off second base when that ball hit the wall as he was allowing Bowers to go back and see if he was going to catch it. And he ends up winning it with Brandon Nimmo delivering the big hit. Almost another huge base running mistake with one out. No reason to be anywhere near that bag. You got to be halfway. But nonetheless, Nimmo's big hit is a great deodorant for an ugly game that the Mets would have been would have been a brutal loss for them had they not come through right there. And the outfield playing really shallow. Powers had to go a long way to go get this baseball. Playing at normal depth, most likely he makes this play, and then you have a tag up. Or even the runner at second. Things change. The New York Mets split this series. No reason for him to be tagging with one out. It's just awful base running that he gets away with. He does get away with it, and it's interesting. Bowers, while he was at the wall, he basically had given up, saying, well, we lost that. And the throw from Torres didn't have a whole bunch of mustard on it either because he probably thought Escobar already hit home base. In any event, the Mets end up splitting this Subway Series two-game set. I feel a lot better about, as you said, what could have been a very bitter pill. A very ugly night turns into a huge win for the Mets. The White Sox lead the Dodgers 2-zip. We'll send you the